welcome to this video. My name is Linus Kiramat, one of the Kenya Lift Program GMA trainers. In this video, we're going to focus on a section of the GMAT exam, uh, which has been introduced in the new focus edition. Uh, the section is Data Insights. Huh? So, more specifically, we're going to look at a topic which is under the Integrated Reasoning uh, section. Uh, the topic is called Graphics Interpretation. So, let's begin. Uh, basically, graphics interpretation uh, tests your ability to interpret and analyze data uh, that is presented visually in the form of a graph or some graphical images uh, that the examiner will provide on the screen. So for each question, you'll be required to understand the information provided. And uh, with that, there are usually a couple of uh, questions that accompany uh, the graph. Right? So for each of these uh, questions, you'll have a uh, a statement uh, or a sentence uh, in which a section of that sentence will have a uh, blank or missing information. Then uh, in that part where you have that in missing information, you will have uh, a drop-down menu uh, that will uh, include the answer that uh, you're supposed to select that would best fit uh, the missing uh, information. All right. So. You are supposed to use the drop-down menus to complete each statement according to uh, information presented in the graph. So first of all, you have to understand the graph that is uh, presented to you. Then uh, with that, you are able to select the best answer from the drop-down menu that best suits the statement that is uh, you're being questioned about. Right? So strategies to use to uh, actually uh, get the questions correct or answers correct in graphical graphics interpretation questions uh, is first of all to study the graph presented, understand uh, what the graph is about, make sure you read the title and know that this graph is about election trends, it's about economic growth, it's about whatever topic they, are, they want to discuss, right? Uh, then take notes of the take note of the axis, uh, what is the x uh, axis about, what is uh, information is presented in the y axis. And then what uh, values are provided in each of the axes that uh, would you help you interpret information in the graph, right? And uh, as a precaution, don't assume that the graph is drawn to scale. Uh, if you go with that assumption, then you'll be making uh, judgments or predictions about numbers or information in the graph that would uh, generally not be accurate, right? So always take, it, uh, take the graph as not uh, being to scale, right? Secondly, read any text around the graph. That includes the key. That means include uh, the titles of the axes, so or, or even the title of the uh, graph itself. Uh, this information will help you to understand the graph more. So it is always incumbent upon you to under, uh, read through the text, uh, any text around the graph. All uh, text around the graph will always have information that relates to uh, the graph you presented and will help you answer questions that will be given later on. Right. Then study the statements uh, with drop-down menus. Make sure you understand the statement. Make sure you read through and uh, you are able to understand what the statement is all about, what the sentence is referring to. Do not rush back to the graph unless you understand uh, very well what the question is about. All right. Then uh, read the, all these choices in each uh, drop-down menu. I do not rush through and uh, because maybe you have a guess or might have an assumption that uh, a particular answer could be correct, just make sure you've read through the all the answer choices that you've provided and make sure that whatever choice you're going for is actually true according to information in the graph. Then lastly, pick the best choice that completes the statement. The best choice that completes the statement is always reinforced by information in the passage. So uh, a wrong answer, basically, or a wrong answer will not uh, reflect truly uh, what the passage is all about. So make sure the choice that you go for, the choice that you think is the right answer, is uh, strengthened by information in the passage. You do this by first of all understanding the pass the not the passage, the graph. Um, if you un have understood the graph, you know what uh, trends are being uh, analyzed, you are able to analyze all the information that is provided in that whole graph conclusively, then from there, you're able to, of course, uh, read through the statement or the question that is that you're being tested on. Then from that, uh, if you link the graph to the statement that is being that you have provided, then I believe you'll uh, be able to comfortably uh, get the correct answer. All right. So if you uh, go through or follow these strategies, the five strategies that you are, that are provided here, I believe uh, you are on course to getting uh, the question correct.
You are watching Success with Bob Moiti Show, presented to you by Upstech America. Upstech America is a consulting company that helps immigrants find amazing higher education and job opportunities in the tech industry in the United States. You can find our programs by going to www.upstechamerica.com. Upstech America, we wake you up to the unlimited potential. Uh, so let's look at a practical example. Uh, this is an example of uh, how graphics interpretation is tested in the GMAT exam. So uh, in our graph, we have a graph here. Uh, we can see a number of uh, details here. First of all, uh, we have our y-axis, uh, which includes information of, about probability of a vote. Uh, first of all, uh, always make sure you understand uh, the title of the graph. So our graph is uh, working time reduction a graph, right? Then y-axis about probability of what? Then you uh, can see number of digits that uh, probably indicate or most likely indicate uh, the, um, the that most probably indicate the probability levels at uh, from 0 0.00 to 0 0.90. Then on the y-axis we have uh, the title of the y-axis issue preference that is from against to for. Uh, we can tell that uh, there are other uh, preferences in between, uh, three preferences in between, we have one, two, three, but uh, the information about what the preferences are all about is not indicated. So um, that is the x-axis. In our key, we have political parties. We have uh, four, uh, five um, uh, data points in this um, key. We have delta, sigma represented by that, the theta, the, uh, zeta, then no preference. Then the graph is all about uh, present uh, that information uh, uh, relating to the political parties and how uh, the probability of what and uh, the issue of the issue the issue of preference how uh, each political party is represented in the graph right so we can move on to the question all right the graph shows the effect of what has previously stated preference regarding the issue of work time reduction on the probability of those voters actual choice being the same as that stated preference. For each party shown in the graph, less than 10% of that party's voters have previously, previously stated preference against the issue. Using the drop down menus, fill in the blanks to make the most accurate statements based on the graph. All right, so this is basically the question and um, it also gives us an explanation of what the graph is all about, all right? So we can read again. The graph shows the effect of what has previously stated preference regarding the issue of work time reduction on uh, the probability of those voters' actual choice being the same as that uh, stated preference. For each partition in the graph, less than 10% of that party's voters have previously stated a uh, preference against the issue. Using the drop-down menus, fill in the blanks to make the most accurate statements based on the graph. So the first question, members of the Dutch party are most apt to vote according to their previously stated uh, preference regarding the issue of work time reduction. Members of the Dutch party are most apt to vote according to their previously stated preference regarding the issue of, of work time reduction. So we can go back to, we can go back to our graph. So uh, basically uh, from the graph we have probability level, probability of uh, members of a particular party uh, voting uh, for for or against an issue. So the individual data points presented in this uh, in each in each uh, uh, party's line uh, indicate the probability level. So for example, if you go with um, uh, zetas, where we have uh, this is about a 0 0.45 probability of them voting for the issue. That will tell you that there's a, a 0 0.55 probability of uh, the members of that political party are uh, going against their uh, initial uh, preference or voting against the issue, all right? Uh, so our question, um, that information applies to all uh, the other lines that we presented here, or all the other lines that present the different political parties. So our uh, question, members of the Dutch party are most armed to vote according to the previous uh, statement Members of the Dutch party are most armed to vote according to their previously uh, stated preference regarding this year of time uh, uh, reduction. So uh, from, from this information, uh, what you're looking for is uh, the graph or the line that presents the party that has 
the highest probability of voting for uh, a particular issue and then having the least probability of voting against or for okay we're looking for um, the line that shows the political party that um, uh, has its members has the highest probability of voting of voting for a particular uh, issue of preference that had that made before so uh, in this graph uh, we can see that um, members of the delta party have the highest probability that is a 0 0.8 per, per uh, 0 0.8 probability of voting for the issue uh, of, of an issue of preference of preference uh, from their previous uh, issue of preference right so uh, that is they have a probability of 0 0.8 against a probability of 0 0.2 of voting against uh, their previous issue of preference so for our case uh, we go with the uh, option delta because it's clearly uh, that they have the highest probability of voting against or voting for a uh, previous issue of preference so for that reason we go going with c uh, delta right secondly members of the dash party are most armed uh, to vote against the issue of work time reduction if their previously stated preference regarding the issue of work time reduction was also against All right so um, we'll go back to our graph uh, this time around we're looking for uh, looking for uh, the the graph or the line um, the graphical presentation of a party uh, that has the highest probability of voting against um, an issue they had previously voted on for. So uh, looking at um, uh, data that relates uh, uh, probability of voting against, uh, we can see that Zeta has the highest uh, probability of voting against a previous issue that voted for. So that is a 0 0.7 probability, which is higher than the other probabilities of the other members of different the other uh, the other three political parties. So for that reason. We're going uh, with the uh, answer choice D, which is Zeta. So members of the Zeta party are most armed to vote against the issue of voting a work of work time uh, reduction if the previously stated preference regarding the issue of work time reduction was also against. All right. So basically, uh, graphics interpretation is about you understanding the graph you presented with, the graph that uh, the examiner will give you. And from that graph, you are able to interpret. Um, analyze and interpret the information provided and seek the best answers uh, with regards to the question that should be given. So with that, we've come to the end of the video. Kind of join us in our GMAT training sessions. We elaborate more on this and other issues that are tested in the GMAT exam. Thank you.